for the greatest story ever told. I'm Ramblin' Rob. Got a great show for you guys tonight, as usual. WAIF, as a community radio station, serves only to open its airwaves to responsible, divergent points of view. The opinions expressed on this program are my own, or those of my guests. They do not necessarily at all reflect the opinions of other programmers or the Board of Trustees. Thanks again for listening. I do have a good program. Got some Grateful Dead coming up, some Bill Kurzenberger, a little DSO for you guys. Got a special uh, contest going on. Check me out on Facebook for that. Uh, Also, a little bit later today in Grateful Dead history, a couple shout-outs, the weather report. Herb Green, iconic rock photographer, will be calling in about 8.30 uh, from the West Coast, touching base with us. Um, pretty much, uh, I was looking through his portfolios in the last couple of days, and it's amazing. Uh, the images I have of the 1960s pretty much are his pictures, uh, honestly. They uh, just are some really, really good uh, behind-the-scenes type of thing. Um, do you have a business that you would like to underwrite on WAIF? We offer very cost-friendly rates, and we can target your underwriting to any show that you choose. That's right. We'll call one of our underwriting experts today at the station or go to WAIF's website, WAIF883.org, and you can help us out that way and get a little information. The cost of underwriting is very affordable. You can underwrite and still stay within your budget. WAIF will help you reach our community with your message. You will be helping your business as well as this great radio station, what radio is meant to be. And you can check out our updated programming grid. Got a lot of new programs here. Been doing some switch around on some things, uh, new slots for people. So go to the WAIF website to check that out. While you're there, get an Android or smartphone app. And while you're there, if you'd like to become a programmer here, become a member and you can fill out a proposal. That's right. If you've got an original idea, uh, some uh, diverse uh, genres, or, uh, you know, I mean, something you're not going to hear on commercial radio. If you've got some uh, great ideas, fill out a proposal. Shoot it on in, and we will evaluate it. Bethany House Services, offering emergency shelter and supportive services to homeless women and children, needs volunteers in the areas of child care, receptionist, maintenance, committee work, and tutoring. For more information about volunteering for Bethany House, call 513-921-1131 or check out their website at www.bethanyhouseservices.org. Healthy Start, Ohio's health insurance option for children, provides health coverage to children and families with limited income who may not have access to comprehensive health care. Applying for Healthy Start is easy. Call their consumer hotline. Got your pencil and paper handy? Okay. 1-800-324-8680. Okay, well, that being said, um, we've got some good Grateful Dead. Herb Green calling in in a little bit. Um, we're going to start out the program with some Grateful Dead, of course, from 1971, 428, the Fillmore East, New York City. Um, this is another one of those long jammers going to... I guess 2015 is the year of the long jam. Yep, we're almost halfway through uh, playing these really long tunes for you guys. But I know you enjoy them, so uh, just to let you know, we got some uh, DSO coming up. A little ramble on Rose maybe later. Getting weird with Phil and Ned. Uh, And, uh, geez, I don't even know if this one's real. Almost 47 minutes playing in the band from 1974. My favorite era for playing in the band. Uh, Saw a really good Dark Star Orchestra show 10-plus years ago, we'll say, up in Indianapolis. And they played a late fall 74 show that just blew me away. And speaking of blown away, I'm going up to the Jubilee, uh, Dark Star Jubilee. If you see me up there, come on by and say hi. I'll be the hippie with the tie-dye on. I'll be easy to find. So I'd love to talk to you guys. Uh, maybe hear about your Grateful Dead songs that you'd like to hear on air. Love those obscure requests. The more obscure, the better. I can delve into my archives, blow off the dust, and I can kick the uh, needle onto the album and check it out. All right. And speaking of checking things out, you can go to Facebook and YouTube. Got a YouTube page uh, channel there with about 150 videos and old shows for you guys. Also, become my friend on Facebook. I would love to tell you all about what's happening here on The Greatest Story Ever Told. 88.3 WAIF. Tune on in, yeah, and 
That was 42871, a little ripple there. All right, well, um, we're going to be playing a little Bill Kurzenberger now. I didn't get to this tune last week when he was in, but uh, I told him I would, and I didn't get to it, so I'm going to play it now. Uh, this is Resonate. This is the one tune that uh, he wrote, of course, it's original. Uh, he wrote and uh, pretty much describes, um, I guess, him in a nutshell, his musical past, stuff like that. So uh, without uh, much further ado, a little a bit. Bill Kurzenberger, one of my favorite local acts. Uh, of course, I try to feature great regional and local acts. The more local and regional, the better. So, um, let's see here. I'm going to cue this up here so you guys can hear the very beginning of it. Um, you can find Bill on Facebook. And while you're there, check out Ramblin' <laughs> With an intonation of instrumental voice A blind collaboration, but not a conscious choice Some call it soulful melody, and others call it noise But it has the potential to make your heart rejoice Let the music resonate 
album Resonate. That was Bill Kurzenberger, my my guest in studio last week. Uh, so definitely check out the new album Resonate. You can get that everywhere online. Uh, Love Bill. That was actually recorded with the Bug Hounds, his new new band. He's always uh, getting into new musical stuff, man. So definitely check him out. My favorite uh, a keyboardist in Ohio. Love when he comes in studio. Uh, we have a, a little not-for-profit thing here, a good uh, thing, a thing for the homeless. One to announce, July 11th at Stanley's, uh, Cincinnati's free store food banks collecting homeless uh, donations. So drop off your donation and come on down for some music from the Wham Bam Thank You Jam on the Road Tour. A little fest that is a, a great little fest. I'm going be visiting in August. So uh, if you guys have any things like t-shirts, underwear, sandals, tennis shoes, flip-flops, shorts, bandanas, hand towels, Gatorade, water, ready-to-eat foods, toiletries, backpacks, duffel bags, light blankets, unfitted sheets, spring jackets, and non-perishable food items, we'll bring them on down to Stanley's and throw them in the barrels. Got a bunch of different barrels, so make sure you throw the right stuff. You don't want to be throwing the food and the clothing and the clothing and the food. So, uh, make sure you keep that straight. All right, well, and keeping things straight here, we're going to get on with some more good stuff from the Grateful Dead, of course. Going to be featuring a... Um, uh, let's see here. Roll the dice with a little maybe Ramble on Rose from 1978 from Red Rocks out in Morrison, Colorado. Uh, great little tune. And uh, may, may try to squeeze some weird stuff in a little bit later in the program. Uh, so here we go, guys. We're not going to get too weird yet. Herb Green should be calling in here shortly. Um, iconic rock photographer. Take a Took a lot of the uh, pictures you see in uh, popular album covers uh, and in magazines and books. A lot of the books I have, especially the black and white photos, uh, are all Herb Green. Igor, would you give me a hand with the bags? Certainly. You take the blonde and I'll take the one in the tavern. Just like
You messed the lyrics up. We still love you, Jerry. Ramble on Rose, great little version there from Red Rocks out in Morrison, Colorado. Okay, well, um, I'm going to be playing some uh, different things for you guys here. We're going to get ready. Hopefully, uh, Herb will call in here in just a second. Got some uh, Facebook stuff to share with you guys. Special little thing here for the Dark Star Show. And also, um, got a YouTube channel. Become my uh, buddy on Facebook.
great music. Sucky show. Remake of the Twilight Zone there from uh, like 1985. That was a Grateful Dead actually doing the intro and the outro. Uh, now we're just going to play a little uh, the weirdness. Eyes of the World from the Main Squeeze from New Orleans. I've been wanting to play this for a while. I really dug this. This is our Jordan's Jam going out to Jordan McElroy.
Sometimes we live no particular way but our own Sometimes we visit your country and sleep in your home Sometimes we ride your horses Sometimes we walk alone Sometimes the songs that we hear are just songs of our own up to find out that you are the eyes of the world The heart has its beaches, its homelands and thoughts of its own Quick now discover that you are the song that the morning brings The heart has its seasons, its evenings and thoughts of its own was the main squeeze there. One of those rare gems I just stumbled upon on the interweb, interwebs thing. That's Don't have to go to New Orleans. I found them on the inter- internet. The main squeeze, squeeze eyes of the world. Okay, well, you guys can check them out like I did. One of those things that just didn't make the cut on my Grateful Dead covers. Okay, we're going to play a rare one here. Grateful Dead 41278, Duke University. And um, this is a, a rare thing in as much as during the drums in space. Jerry actually came out and played drums. So you're going to be checking uh, some weird banging and weird sounds there. That's Jerry Garcia, Bill Kreutzmann, and Mickey Hart. So we're going to rock out to the little drums now.
heard little Jerry drums there from 41278. We got uh, Herb Green called in, iconic rock photographer. We're going to touch base with him here in just a second. Um, and um, you guys can find him on Facebook, too. Hey, Herb, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks for calling into the greatest story ever told. I appreciate that. Um, I, um, I've told some uh, people earlier tonight that when I uh, think in my head, at least as a, a man in my mid to late 40s, about the 60s and rock music and what was going on, for some reason, it's just a kaleidoscope of your pictures. And, and I, I appreciate that very <laughs> much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was a lot of music back then. Uh, you know, I... I tell people to uh, watch Woodstock to get an idea of the, you know, the versatility of all of that. It was, like, amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we spent, uh, my ex-wife was Bill Graham's uh, secretary, personal secretary at the time, so we spent, you know, all our time at the ballrooms. Oh. You'd go to, the, you know, the film and then, you'd, you know, we got in there free, of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, and then did the Avalon and... Chat lets you in all the time, so it's like it was pretty, pretty neat. You know, I, I couldn't possibly do that now. I, we're looking forward to uh, Chicago with a bit of dread because. Oh yeah. I don't know how I'm not going to do all three nights. That's for sure. I want mm -hmm. to take one off in the middle. I, I've done it, but it's like the recovery time now is pretty old. I don't know how <laughs> Phil does it, to tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah the, I, I, I always wonder myself when I see those guys still trucking and playing multiple hour shows. I, I guess they just have an enormous love for the music. I guess that's what drives them. Oh, he, I asked Bob once, I said, the rat dog, he said, how do you do it? Or why? Why? He said, well, it's what I do, you know? <laughs> and I, 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 I've been, you know, back there when Steve, you know, Phil comes off the stage and he can hardly walk, you know? Right. That big, that big smile is certainly gone, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I think Bill Graham yeah, said but, it. You know, it's, it's what they do and that's great. And, uh, yeah, I think Bill Graham go. said it best. He's like, you know, they, they're not the uh, uh, the best at what they do. They're the only ones that do what they do. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So you've taken photographs of uh, just, uh, like I say, album covers, you know, books. You have several books out yourself. Um, and like I say, when I look at my books, uh, you know, on the Grateful Dead, and your images always pop up there. And it was a, a rare thing in as much as uh, during that time, it's almost unheard of where you weren't just the photographer. You actually hung out with the bands, got to know them, got Got on the inside and got some real, you know, especially if Pigpen, I'm, I'm a big Pigpen fan, uh, especially of him. You got some just absolutely phenomenal photographs. And I always wonder uh, if that could ever happen again. And I seriously doubt it. What do you think about that? Uh, I, you know, it's just probably happening in the hip hop thing. Yeah, possibly. There's yeah, probably you... some guy with a camera, you know. Yeah, doing, joining <laughs> the entourage. <laughs> yeah, there, there's, well, now that everybody uses fashion photographers. Too, so, you know. So, so it, it, but the whole thing, you know, the whole thing has changed a whole lot, and uh, right, it's a lot more formal uh, now yeah, than and, informal. And, uh, we were a real tight knit community, mm -hmm. and there weren't very many of us. You know, I mean, when it all went was starting back then, uh, there's a handful of people that could play basically, and now right. everybody can play. It seems like this go to a party and there'll be five guys pull out guitars, and mm -hmm. you know, and do a show right exactly exactly <laughs> so uh, it, you know it, it, back then it was kind of unusual and uh so again, i mean it was a small community and uh and, it, and then it dispersed right uh, so it what's kind of like a 90 day wonder you know like uh everybody did, like all the company labels sent people out and signed anybody that could even hold a guitar right especially out in san francisco and, uh, Yes, I'm talking about, and, and uh, then everybody got signed and, and left. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the, the, the Grateful Dead went out to Marin, and, you know, I think everybody, once once Time Magazine ran that article on the height and uh, all the, you know, kids came out there and created uh, quite the scene with homeless people and, you know, the, the diggers feeding oh, people and stuff like that. It was, yeah. and bad drugs, and, and it, it, it was, was quite, awful. yeah, it was, I wasn't It was alive, awful. But, yeah. I, I got to tell you, about the 50th anniversary of the Summer of Love is coming up, and I guess that's going to be a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm kind of amazed at the 50th of the dead has turned out to be this way. Yeah, I was shocked myself. Uh, I never saw that coming. Uh, I, I knew there'd be something, and I, I certainly know there was a big fan base, and I right. certainly have a lot, you know, all my friends and my real friends are like, you know, deadheads or mm -hmm. fans, you know, and uh, there's a lot of, pure, you know, and like, and it's great. That's the best thing about it. Someone, someone on, who is it? 
Anthony Bordino, if you guys watch Oh, Anthony yeah, yeah, Bordino. you're familiar with him. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love that guy, but he was in New Orleans. It, this is the series he did called Led the Layover, mm-hmm. and it's kind of Anthony Bordino in the raw. He swears, they bleep him out, and he gets <laughs> drunk, and he and some of the things he says is just like, you know, just every now and then he'll drop one on you. But <laughs> he was doing this jazz Piano players, you know, and this guy, the guy said, "Yeah, I went out to Portland and I came back as soon as I figured out the Grateful Dead were an organized religion." <laughs> you know, well, in, some in a way, think that's that. true. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's not organized, but it's certainly it's has, very chaotic. Uh, has, well, it has that uh, spiritual, you know, peer thing going. Right. And it's, but someone said, one of the writers said, it was they turned concrete uh, coliseums into cathedrals. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you look at the you yeah. know, the fan base now, especially. I mean, if you see, you know, some 15-year-old kid in a tie-dye listening to the Grateful Dead bootleg from 1983 or something, you know, that says something to me that, you know, this, this person could listen to the music, get into it, immerse himself in it, you know, spiritually like most of us do with the Grateful Dead. And, and you know, he didn't even see Jerry. I mean, they weren't even around when this kid was born, you know. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's almost timeless. So that's good. Yeah, pretty, you're good. Am, pretty amazing. I, I uh, Jerry cast a real long shadow. Oh, yes. that, that Jerry thing is on tonight. The Jerry that, thing. What's that? The the, the the Jerry or there's a festival or a show or something uh, somewhere, a live show. I'm really sorry. I'm brain dead right no, now. No, that's all right. I don't, I don't watch a lot of TV. Like, so I can't articulate like I would like. No. Uh, but there's a, there's just some big event. A lot of musicians are playing it. I oh, think Bob's out there. TRI and uh, Mickey. Yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. Anyway, that's happening right now, even as we speak. Mm. And uh, I've been working on a, a Time Life, a Time Books. Oh, yeah. Time Life. Life books. Right, right. Uh, and that'll be coming out, uh, you know, pretty soon. I, I, I assume you've seen the, the Newsweek one. Yes, yes. Which isn't bad, which isn't bad. I might actually, actually own uh, that, to tell you the truth. Uh, well, good. But yeah. I, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, they kind of did a lot. My the life project was supposed to be like a really a book, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. not a not a fanzine, and it was going to be like my entire catalog, wow. basically, you know, with to have the hate street pictures, mm-hmm. and the, you know, as well as all the other bands and stuff. But then it turned into suits got to it and it turned into a <laughs> fanzine. Well, what? which is, you know, the way, just the way it is these days, right. uh, but still it's going to be pretty nice. I, I, if it features your photography, <laughs> well, I mean, if it features your photography, I can guarantee it's going to be pretty nice. Cause like it's I said, it's not going to, it's not going to suck, which seems to be the, <laughs> the, the, the criteria we all aim for now, you know. Well, I can guarantee Oh, God, it. don't let it suck, I you can know? guarantee it will not suck after having seen your photographs for decades, quite literally decades. So, I mean, you're going to Chicago. That's great. I'm glad the Grateful Dead are still going. I'm glad that, the, you know, photography is still going. Um, besides the book, you got any other big plans for 2015? Oh, Chicago thing now. Yeah. You know. I tried to get tickets to no avail, but that's okay. Yeah, a lot of people, <laughs> unfortunately. Right. So do you have a favorite, you know, when you look back through the years at all the people and all the places you've been to, did you have a, a favorite artist that you like to photograph? Sly Stone. Sly Stone? Pretty fast, huh? Yeah, that was. Most people... He's amazing. Was he's he? He's an amazing, amazing person. I mean, as he had... Uh, Incredible aura, you know. He just drew people in. I was, I got called from CBS to. Mm-hmm. Do, we want you to do work with Sly Stone. and want you to do the whole package, to do the graphics, the whole thing. Right. And I said, Oh God, Sly Stone. <laughs> you know, yeah. That, you know all the stories. Yes. And he came in a little half an hour later, which wasn't too bad. And uh, mm-hmm. he just turned out to be the guy who's just remarkable. And then he worked with the new writers. Really. So I, yeah. I I got to do two. I worked yeah. him twice. Well, that's excellent. Packed record covers and uh, and hung around when he was with uh, did the new writers with the new writers. It was just uh, so I mean, Bob, Bob, you know, Bob Johnson, the producer. Mm-hmm. Bob, yeah, there is a role in Bob. 
Oh, there you go. Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, he brought Sly Stone in. <laughs> well, I was going to say he's that a musical guy. I mean, God, he'd just sit there and just make up songs, just you know, and be talking, and you know, all of a sudden the conversation would turn into a song. Well, and he'd be at the keyboard. It was crazy. Yeah, he he was one of those guys that uh, he was iconic in the scene. I don't think there's been anybody since him that you know tried to. I'm sure there's been people tried to do what he did, but he was he was it, man. He's kind of like the Beastie Boys. It's, it's Sly stone and no one's like him it's just it it's just them so uh have you so graham call it about this name uh larry graham took over you know this took everything from Sly and mm-hmm. graham central station yeah you know, whatever you well, whatever <laughs> there you go there you go so if you had uh, uh, you know, photographing jerry was always fun and oh, jerry yeah. liked to be, jerry liked to be photographed most people do Right. Yeah, I'm, I was going to say. I'm saying this right. <laughs> no, no. Most people do like to get photographed. Think about this. No, oh my God. What did I say? So, uh, uh, so photographing the band was interesting because you had to jam. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they gave it to you, but you had to pick it up. Right. You know, you know. Right. If you look at my stuff, I did. So it was like, and I. Not many people did. Well, they didn't have. That they weren't photographed often. Thank God for me. I, right, I call yeah. it brief encounters, brief encounters with the dead, because they could have been photographed by every major photographer in the country every year. Right, right. But <laughs> they only let us select. They only let us select few care. trusted they people. They didn't care about it, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Basically, and I was a friend. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, uh, kind of I, the same way with their music. Yeah, you know, I was on a rotation too. The, there was a couple other people. That, well, Jim Marshall photographed him a few times. And right. There was a, but over the years, I maintained my relationship with him. Excellent, you excellent. Know, to, to, from the beginning to the end. Yeah. Well, and I still and I still work with him. And you're still going to Chicago. There you go. So yeah. if you had to pick one picture that you know maybe that was on uh, your tombstone here so many years into the future. If you had to pick one picture, what do you think it would be? It would be a portrait of Rod Stewart. A portrait of Rod Stewart? I have a portrait of Rod Stewart. It's like, yeah, if I had to have one photo image to get into heaven, it'd be that. Mm, mm. Yeah, I was going to say. It's a perfect portrait. So it's a perfect portrait. It's just, I love that. Well, I got Jeff Beck band was like, Oh my! Good to film more, God. You got every. You know, there was all these people go to. Right. You'll laugh. Tiny Tim was like amazing. Buck <laughs> Owens was a. Buck, no, don't, no, Tiny Tim killed me. And really? uh, Buck Owens was a great show. And oh yeah. Of course, oh, there yeah. was. There, but there, how do you count? There's you know, Ray Charles and Tabitha Franklin. I mean, good the Lord. You know, I mean, it was just endless. Bill Graham has a. Just, just the genius of putting acts together. Yeah, he he had an organizational ability and uh, well, and a love for money too. That uh, you know drove the scene. I mean, he was uh, he was the the straight guy almost driving the scene forward. I mean, kind of. I won't say he just kind of drugged the hippies along or anything like that, but he gave them amazing opportunities well, to get their music who, out. You know, they, he, they, he knew who would plunk down two dollars, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, he was mm-hmm. an entrepreneur. Uh, he was, uh, you know, with the, with the then, you know, Fillmore East, too. I mean, look at that. I mean, not even the Fillmore. Fillmore West grew some great acts. Fillmore East grew some great act, drew some great acts. So, yeah, he was, a, he was a, a big, big influence in the music scene in general, not just in the San Francisco music scene. Yeah. I, I love well, the guy. That, this, the book goes, is it My Life in Rock and Roll, Robert Greenfield, if you yeah. want to get a, it's pretty good. Greenfield's book about Garcia is really good, too, Dark Star. Oh, yeah, I read that. Yeah, yeah. I because. Read that. Because he's objective, because he wasn't a fan, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, and so his his view and his take was like objective, right? And that's great. Yeah. Whereas I, everything I, else is like <laughs> Robert Hunter told me, it's pre-digested tablum. <laughs> well, I mean, compare I'm dying like to read, uh, I'm dying to read Troisman's book. Yeah, I have not read it, but I mean, you compare like yeah. Phil Lesh's book where everything's all candy coated and Phil's, you know, never does anything wrong to like maybe like Rock Scully's book where it's like, whoa, that's probably oh, yeah, what I it like was Rock like. Rock Scully's book a whole lot, whether it's factual or not. R- right. You know? Right. But it's, he got a little more down and dirty. Story and it's a good story, you know, and, mm-hmm. and it's funny. Yes, very and funny. He, you know, like I, I, I was around it forever and like I, there was that dark period of time when the cocaine thing started and mm-hmm. it was just like 
it was pretty bleak. You know, right. I stopped going because it was like not good. Mm-hmm. It wasn't good. Oh, no, bad vibe and, uh, there, definitely. Oh, not good. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. good. But anyway, so Christman, I guess it's warts and all, you know, and uh, <laughs> I, uh, uh, I was hoping uh, McNally's book would spill the beans, you know, about the end and all the, you know, all that, but it right. didn't. <laughs> no, but, but it was still a well written book. It's a fabulous book. Right. And I'm not criticizing the book, but I was just, you know, being close to it. So this kind of thing. Maybe they're going to tell the story because the Mega Daddy era was like, you know, pretty rich. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But In all kinds of ways, you know, and it would have been. Uh, and my, my ex-wife at the time, who was not talking about Bill Graham Marishka, was mm-hmm. the tour accountant, tour accountant for the dead. Right. During that period, you know, so uh, and I was around a lot. Now, I was around a lot because I was a, I got, I was up a born again deadhead. I got, I got it right. Right before Jerry had to come went into the diabetic coma, uh-huh, I, got, uh-huh. I said, "Oh Lord, this is great," you know, and, and uh, hooked back in. I always go to a show a couple, three times a year just to say hello and stuff. But I do just need to leave after the first set and. Well, you know. no, nothing wrong with that, man. <laughs> you're missing... And all of a sudden, David Gans had me sit through a whole, a whole half, and it was like I got commissioned to do the portraits that were in the, on the dark, in the dark. Yes. Uh, yeah. Even though it wasn't in the dark yet. And then Garcia went into the coma, but before that happened, I, I called Gans and said, hey, man, you've got to take me to a concert. You know, i I got to get caught up here. And so David took me to a Berkeley Community concert. Uh-huh. And I sat through the second set, and I was blown away. I right. mean, it was like 20th century music, you know. I mean, they, it was a really good second set. Is what mm. I'm getting at. Right, right. And it, it was pretty cohesive, and it made a lot of sense. Not, and that didn't always happen, but, <laughs> but, uh, but I got it, you know, and uh, and I didn't. And I sincerely. Got it. <laughs> good. That's good. I like David Gans. He's a, he's been a guest several times, interviewed us several times, hung out with him a lot, and hang out with him when he comes to Cincinnati a fair amount. Mm-hmm. So he's a he's, he's a, great a high guy. IQ guy. High yeah. IQ guy. Yeah, he's a very really, smart, really, really smart guy, you know, and articulate and talented and yeah. He, all I call him. I call him the, David. Yeah, actually, I <laughs> I interviewed him. Uh, I won't go any further. <laughs> He was um, a month ago. I interviewed him. He did a call in for. Oh my God! It was almost like twenty five, thirty minutes. We did an interview, and uh, I kind of call him the Benjamin Franklin of the Grateful Dead. He's a Renaissance man, and he's pretty much seen it all, done it all. He's if it's you know author or musician or uh, radio yeah, you, show. You host. got that right. Well, I'm going to let you nice people go to bed. Yes, Herb. Thank you very and much I'm for calling. Say, in. Uh, you know, hope you all have a great night and. Um, Play safe. I will do that. Hey, one more quickie for you. What's your favorite Grateful Dead tune? You know what? Uh, on Dick's Picks 5. Oh, yeah. There's uh, Alabama, uh, Alabama Getaway into Promised Land. Cool. Excellent. Unbelievable. Oh, I will highly recommend that's that. One. Unbelievable. That's, that's just that's, and it's, and it's, and it's, how do you pick one out of all of it? Yeah, well, you just you did, know, brother. I, it, but uh, like I say, that Alabama into Promised Land is like holy lord. That's your holy grail. One huh? more note, and it would just you know disintegrate into the universe. <laughs> that you know, I mean, it's just you know, and you know what I'm talking about. Uh, just, I know what you mean, man. I mean, it's like, oh well, my lord, that's just I know great. what you mean. Well, Herb, okay. thank you very much. Uh, have a good evening and uh, take care, brother. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. See you, man. Bye, bye. All right, that was uh, Herb Green, iconic rock photographer. Love touching base with him, uh, a man who, uh, if you don't know his photography, you should definitely go on the website, his website, and check it out. Uh, and like I said, when I think of the 1960s, all the books I've read, all the films I've seen, um, all the acts I've heard, um, it's just a pretty much a collage, a kaleidoscope of his pictures and images. And uh, I forgot to even ask him that, you know, when you guys look at all the, uh, you know, say like 1966-ish pictures of the Grateful Dead and you see the uh, the hieroglyphic wall, you know. I always thought that was under a bridge or something. Turns out I think it's in Herb's bedroom back then. I went in his old houses. But uh, maybe next time I'll ask him that. Okay, well, let's get on with some more music here. Uh, I'm going to get in. Uh, let's see here. It's uh, a little bit after the hour. You're listening to 88.3 FM. 
W-A-I-F. Um, we've got some great music from the Grateful Dead coming up. Um, this one might not be the Grateful Dead. I don't know what this is. But uh, you guys will definitely want to find me on Facebook and YouTube. Have a good stuff, uh, a good channel there with some great old programs. Also have some good stuff coming on a little bit later. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch will be on at 10 p.m. in just a little under an hour. Um, I don't know what Rob or John have up their sleeves tonight, but I'm sure it's going to be a great show. I always love listening to them. Uh, real quick, though, today in Grateful Dead history, what you guys missed. I missed a lot of good things. 1970, Grateful Dead were out on the East Coast at the Fillmore East. And uh, that was an early late show. Also, that was an acoustic electric show where they uh, did two shows early and late and then came out with a... Uh, um, an acoustic and electric set. Uh, also, that was the first ballad of Casey Jones. And uh, first time I hear a voice a call in. Cold Jordan was also done that night with David Nelson. Um, 1977, St. Louis Arena. That was the first Ico, Ico, and first passenger. 1980, Nassau Veterans Coliseum, Uniondale, New York. 1981, Rutgers Athletic Center. In Piscataway, New Jersey. Love that. Piscataway sort of town. 1983, the Greek Theater, Berkeley, California. That might be the show that, uh, right around the time that uh, Old Herb was talking about. And uh, had a lot of special guests pop out there tonight. Arita, uh, Flora Perham, uh, Billy Cobain, and John Cipollina all stepped up with the boys and played. Um, and the last time they played, 1993, Sam Boyd Silver Bowl, Las Vegas and Nevada. And if I remember right, it was a real hot, hot show as far as the temperature goes. Uh, weather report tomorrow, in case you guys are wondering. Uh, pray the storm to come, Lord. It surely looks like rain. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that little interview with Herb's, Herb as much as I do. I call him Herb. He called himself Herbie. Anyway, um... How about um, a little playing in the band? Uh, we're going to set the cruise control here. Uh, you might want to get yourself a cold drink, a couple cigarettes, a little ashtray, end table, kick your feet up, put some headphones on. Okay, I think that will prepare you enough. But, uh, yeah, we're going to get on with this playing in the band from 1974-521, the University of Washington, Seattle. Uh, a great long jammer. This one's mind-blowing. Love this late 74 era. The guys were hot, hot, hot. And speaking of hot, 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 you can tune in to Disco World with your host, Disco Dave and Disco Cheryl, as they play various songs by various artists throughout the So there you go. Uh, this message comes from the Hamilton County Emergency Management Agency, WAIF, and Ramblin' Rob. Okay, well, I'm going to quit rambling because you guys, uh, in case you are just tuning in, you're getting ready for some hot stuff here. Um, we're going to feature a little playing in the band, and I'm not sure what this one is, but uh, we'll play it anyway. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a good tune. Going to feature some live music here. I always like playing stuff live for you guys. Uh, if given a choice between live or studio, I'm always going to pick the live version. And audience versions aren't too bad. Let me know what this tune is. I'm not sure. Find me on Facebook. Thank you. 
Crystal Ballroom 2015 for three. How'd that get in there? I don't know. Whatever that song is. You guys might want to let me know on Facebook. I don't know what that one was. But that sure was good. Everybody likes a little Bob Dylan, right? Of course they do. Fool. Anyway, uh, speaking of uh, fools, you'd be a fool not to miss this great event for charity. Cincinnati has a lot of homeless people, and this is going to help them. Cincinnati Free Store Food Bank is putting on the event July 11th at Stanley's Pub. Go down there and drop off some good uh, items for the homeless. Um, music will be brought to you by the Almighty Get Down and Mainline Funk. Uh, from Dayton, uh, Love of Life Productions on the road to Wham Bam, a great little event in August I'll be going to. But uh, two of the bands playing there are going to play down for your listening enjoyment at Stanley's. Uh, we need a couple things. They'll have a couple different barrels there for you guys to put these in. Uh, T-shirts, underwear, sandals, tennis shoes, flip-flops, shorts, bandanas, hand towels, Gatorade water, ready-to-eat foods. Toiletries, backpacks, duffel bags, light blankets, unfitted sheets, spring jackets, and non-perishable food items. So if you have any of those, bring them down there in plenty so you can help out a good cause. Um, driving around Cincinnati a lot uh, in my job, there's a lot of problems. Uh, there's a lot of uh, homeless people out there, and hopefully uh, you guys can bring some stuff down there to help them out. Okay. On with the music. You're listening to WAIF, Ramblin' Rob, and The Greatest Story Ever Told. I hope you guys enjoyed the interview with Herb Green as much as I did. Um, find me on Facebook. also have a YouTube page. Love to get uh, on your list of friends so you guys can tell me what's going on with you, do some f- Grateful Dead requests, etc., etc. All right, well, I'm going to just probably roll on out of here playing some music. So um, until next week, stick around for the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Greatest story ever told. Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Ramblin' Rob and Judge Rob. Yeah, great, great. Rob, Rob. Thursday nights, back to back. Gotta love it. Okay, and speaking of gotta love it, you're going to like this playing in the band. It's going to get psychedelic as forementioned. I told you, well, God, it seemed like 20 minutes ago what you got to do to enjoy it. But you don't have to do anything. You just got to listen. Just listen to the music play. This is a top to, uh, you know, what we use on stage. But it's very, very special because if you can see, yeah, the numbers all go to 11. Look. Right across the board, oh. 11, oh, 11, and most of 11, and then amps go up to 10. Exactly. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? It's not 10. You see, most, most blokes are going to be playing at 10. You're on 10 here, all the way up, all the way up, yeah. all the way up. You're on 10 on your guitar. Where can you go from there? Where? I don't know. Nowhere, exactly. What we do is if we need that extra push over the cliff, you know what we do? Uh, Put it up to 11. 11, exactly. One louder. Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. You could finish four years of college in one week.
some folks trust to reason, others trust to buy. I don't trust nothing, but I know it from my brother. Say it once again now, but I hope you understand. When it's done and over, love, man is just a man. Playing, playing in the band. Day and break, day and break on the land.
This is a used 2011.
You're listening to WAIF 88.3 FM in Cincinnati. And it's time for the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. <laughs> 